Okay, today we're going to discuss voltage and electric potential. To do this, we're going to take a look at a charge that's been placed in a uniform electric field. Now, difficult or not, the idea of a charge in an electric field is a bit ethereal. So we're also going to take a look at the situation of a ball falling off a cliff, because that's a situation you're already familiar with. See, a ball falling off a cliff is going to behave much like a charged particle in an electric field. Both objects are going to accelerate because of some force. In the case of our falling ball, it's gravity that makes the ball accelerate. And in the case of the charged particle, it's the electric force that's going to make this particle accelerate. Now you'll remember that any time a force acts on an object over some displacement, work is done. And mathematically, work is defined as FD cosine theta, where F is the force, D is displacement, and theta is the angle between the two. So in the case of our falling ball, the work done by gravity is given by force by gravity multiplied by the height which we let this ball fall. Now you remember the force by gravity is mg. So combining these two equations we get the work done by gravity is mgh. And you'll remember, we call this term the gravitational potential energy. Now in the case of this charge, the work done on the charge by the electric force is given by the electric force multiplied by the displacement. And you remember the electric force for a charge is simply the magnitude of the electric field multiplied by the quantity of charge, which we've placed in that field. So combining these two, we get this term, which is what we refer to as the electric potential energy. Now stop right there. I know it's tempting, having heard the words electric potential energy, to think to yourself, yep, I got it, and then to move on to whatever it is you want to watch on YouTube here. The issue is, electric potential energy is not the same as electric potential. And it's for that reason that we've dropped this hypothetical ball today. See, regardless of the mass of the ball, when this ball lands, the work by gravity will always be proportional to the mass of the ball. We can see that right here. So if we double the mass of the ball, then we're going to double the work done by gravity. Now back to our charge. The work done by the electric field is always proportional to the quantity of charge if we double the amount of charge. Then the work done on the charge will also double. So looking at our equation for the work done by the electric field, we can pull out our term Q, which is going to leave us with this. Now it's not super obvious as to why, but we're going to refer to this term ED as the electric potential. So the electric potential multiplied by the charge in the field will simply give us the work done by that charge. If we look at the units of electric potential, we can see the units are joules per coulomb. And here, kids, is the big kicker in all of this. This term electric potential is so important that we give it its own special units. Rather than referring to it as a joule per coulomb, we call this a volt like a volt from a battery, or a volt from an outlet. Now looking at the work done on a charge like this, using this equation is usually a little bit silly, but when we look at something like a battery in a circuit, where rather than having a single charge moving, we have lots of charge flowing, a volt becomes extremely useful because the total work done by a flowing charge will always be a function of the voltage and just how much charge we allow to flow. Going back to the units, a volt is a joule per coulomb and a charge is measured in coulombs. So if we multiply those two together, we get joules or the work done on our light bulb here. Now we'll explore the math behind this a bit more when we get to something called Ohm's law. But for now, I want you to see where a volt comes from and how it's going to be useful in a circuit going forward. And on that note, that's all for now.